been looking all over for you. Look, Ernie, if it's about Hina Sharples, I haven't had the time. But it's up to you to tell her. We did toss up, you know. Aye, I know, and I will tell her. Ah, but when? She lives above my shop, you know, I'm frightened of going Look, in. Hina Sharples and a flipping job aren't the only things on my agenda. I know you're a busy man. You can say that again. I do every mortal thing there is to do for this council, <laughs> bar empty the dustbins. But it's such a simple job. Look, say we forget we toss up and I come with you. Yes, I was thinking that. It might look better if we both went. Look, I might be round your way at dinner time. Now, I only say I might. I'm not promising anything. You're not going far in politics, then. It's what you promise that counts, lad. You promise them heaven, I promise them earth. There's one big difference. They don't come back from heaven to heckle you. <laughs> right. Now, take it from me, brother. It's very difficult. You see, you never know who's going to drop on you next. I'll do, Clary. The town hall at two? Yes. Yes, thank you. Do you know if I can get a bus there from Rosamond Street? 63. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Who's that? I thought you were going straight on to college after dropping the twins. I changed my mind. Honestly, Ken, you're mooning around like somebody not right. Oh, I miss one period at college, for heaven's sake. Yes, well, they'll be losing patience with you. Then where's your job? No, they can please themselves. Right now, I'm more concerned about the attitude you're adopting over the twins. Poor little mites. Is that supposed to be some sort of dig? When I think of them being passed from one pair of hands to another. Yes, well, that's just why I've come back. I want them to stay in my hands. Never thought much of this environment for bringing up children. Look, Mother, if we could just stop throwing things and sit down. I was ready to compromise before, but oh no, you knew what was best. Well, you're the one who seems to be putting in the claims of infallibility. I even offered to move house and home. Still good. It's too late. I mean, Dad isn't a fit man. I, I wouldn't like to take the chance. Well, look, oh, Mother, supposing, supposing I advertised again and you could help me choose. Choose another nanny. I'd be no better at it than you are. It'd be just be another one in a long line of disasters. Misfortune. Yes, well, call them what you like, Ken, but there's no denying they'd be mostly of your making. Look, Mother, I eat humble pie all you like, but right now we've got to find a solution. Well, the only feasible solution is for those children to come to Glasgow with me. I'm not leaving without them. That's for me to say. It may not be. Now, come on, don't go all tight-lipped and enigmatic. Spell out what you mean. You know very well what I mean. Well, I find it very hard to believe that this situation, difficult as it is, justifies you turning my children into some sort of legal football. Look, Ken, somebody's got to decide who's best fitted to bring them up. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be the courts. I mean, do we have to have a battle over this? I won't fire the first shot, and I find it very difficult to believe that you will. I don't know anything about battles or shots, but I'll tell you in plain words, Ken, I've fixed an appointment with the children's department. I've got to be there at two o'clock sharp. You've what? There's nothing you can say now will stop me. I'm going, and that's an end of it. Then there's nothing more to be said. It does take two to make a battle, you know. There's something else about battles. It's always the innocent who suffer. Or don't you read the papers anymore? Joy. She's going to the town hall this afternoon. You're joking. She isn't. Well, what are you going to do? God knows. I must say the brightest thing in here today is the brass work. If Ildry is that, she'll be after a bonus. <laughs> Mrs. Sharple's lost in thought and you're unusually subdued. Hilda again. Forgot to give me a polish. Well, it's nearly opening time. Perhaps the lunchtime settle would cheer us up. It's them kids I feel sorry for. Getting dragged up by a narrow-minded old acid drop like Edith Tatlock. Oh, come, Bess. It's not like you to bear malice. Well, it's not just me. If she's ready to call me a tart, what does that make you? <laughs> I'm sure she wouldn't go that far. She went near enough. 
And it's not just Ken Barlow. I think she looks down on all of us. She certainly can't look down on me. She thinks this is a very unsalubrious district, and rumour has it she's taking them kids away. Oh, no, Bet. Even Mrs Tatlock couldn't go to those lengths. You just wait. And she must realise that for Ken to get drunk was utterly uncharacteristic. Ah, uh, he don't contribute much to profits, does he? Mind you, there are people in this street, I must admit, whose parental qualifications leave a good deal to be desired, but I am naming no names. You don't have to. No. But, as you know, I am no snob, and I am the last person in the world to gossip or to involve myself in other people's domestic affairs. Is that crack meant for me? No, love, but you were taking a risk. But, having said that, I must add that Mrs Tatlock had no call to heap abuse on your head or to cast aspersions on the running of this establishment. And if she dares to show her face in here, I shall take the matter up with her. Ah, well, tell her off and all while you're at it. Oh, here we are, Mrs Walker, the first of the merry lunchtime odds. Usual double brandy, love. Oh, I'm almost tempted. Miss Nugent. Well, it might just help to bolster my sagging resolve. Bolster you what? I said brandy, not brandy. That'll be enough. Well, I've been entrusted with the ordeal of tackling the lioness in her lair, so to speak. The what? The li... Oh, you're not leaving already, Mrs Sharp. Well, either that or I'm wearing my coat back to front. Oh, what a pity. I... I don't suppose I could ask you to linger a while, as the poets say. Why, have we got business together? I thought perhaps we could pass the lunch hour in congenial conversation. About what, for instance? Matters of mutual interest. Sounds like hot, thirsty work. Would a milk stout be any help? Well, it wouldn't be an hindrance. I'll have it in snug. A milk stout and uh, something soft, like me. Matters of mutual interest, you said. <laughs> oh, look, there are no rules where kids are concerned, Emma. And I'll tell you something else. The morning is that that warehouse don't go any short. Oh, my legs are killing me. No, look, from the minute they're born till they finally cut the apron strings, you never know whether you're doing the best for them or not. Well, I don't think my esteemed parents ever did much art searching. Ah, oh, fair dues. Well, they probably pondered a minute as to which doorstep to leave me on. Oh, get off. They thought the world of you. Ah, then finally decided they might as well go in for the family allowance. I don't think that's funny, so I'm not going to laugh. Oh, be a devil going to old charge you. Well, I'd hate to think of our Linda talking about me like that. Oh, get off with you. You know I'm only joking. Oh, you're all right, miseriatus is this morning. Look at him with a face like sour milk. Honestly, now, what's the matter? I know United's out of that many cups they're drinking tea from the saucers. Give us a box of matches. Oh, your face and a wet week in Lytham St Anne's will go well together. Unless they're the funny, Stuart. Yeah, you're not blaming yourself for that Barlow punch-up, are you? Well, I'm not very proud of my part in the affair. I saw Ken Barlow this morning. He's shaken rigid. Oh, will you shut up piling it on? Well, that flaming mother-in-law of his. She's only made an appointment with the Child Welfare Commission. She's not done it at all. Oh, I bet Ken's sweating blue lights. She doesn't stand a chance, does she? Honestly, I'm losing my patience. She doesn't stand the cat in hell's chance. And Ken wants to tell her to get back to Land and stop trying to stir it. Will you put your clog in your cake hole for just one second and let the man speak? If Edith Tatlock tells the tale to the town hall people that she says she's going to tell them... Ah, right, tale it is, and all. Long as our cat, she wants throttling with Grow up, Irma. Well, you get on my nerves, you all seem to take us as serious. And you think it's a big giggle? I do not. I think it's awful, and I think Edith Tatlock wants telling. And if she's such a fool as to go mothering the toffee-nosed madam you get at the town hall, well, it's all Piccadilly to a slice of wet tripe she's going to get to. Don't you kid yourself. Edith Tatlock can do the middle-class matron bit when she wants to. She can drum up a fairly plausible case, can her, yeah? Aye, she'll still have them running for the forms and papers. Oh, talk about Jeremiah. Look, sir. Uh, nobody's saying that she's going to get the kids, but it's not cut and dried that she won't. Supposing you're some prim young lass with a degree in sociology and you find out this tale about a fellow whose wife's just died and he's going out getting K-Line. Local barmaid looking after the kids. And he lives in an area they might call twilight, industrial, decaying. Nice, kind granny. They're well-spoken woman offering to give them a good, secure home. I'm not 100% sure she'd win. No, but whichever way it goes, it's going to be nasty. Shop! Come on, Ernie, I've only got an hour for my dinner, you know. 
Is she lined up? Don't flap, Mr. Roberts. I'm not flapping, I'm just in a rush. Oh, just give me a chance to get my jacket buttoned up. Have you got Ina Sharples pinned down? I don't know about pinned down. It's like Donnie Miss Nugent's got the weight for it. Anyway, everything's organised. I've heard that before. Don't worry, my faithful assistant is holding the fort at the Rovers. Oh, Rovers, is it? Hey, is that, uh, is that blonde barmaid on at dinner times? I believe so, but uh, that's not what we're going for, is it? I've given Emily strict instructions to keep Mrs. Mrs. Sharples talking till we arrive. Right, let's be doing. Once more, into the breach. Look, I know his mother-in-law's gone up to the town hall. What I want to know is what's Ken doing about it? Probably waiting developments. I don't know whether he's bored or punch drunk or just burnt out. Hoping she'll change her mind, I suppose. By what? Divine intervention? Oh, that's a bit hard, isn't it? Oh, look, love, he's got to stop moping around and get cracking and do something. There's only one person can change into Tatlock's mind, and, well, he ought to be told, shouldn't he? Well, you're his pal. I feel almost paternal, you know. You know, when th this sort of thing gets going, you can't stop it. It's like a runaway horse. I know how he feels. I haven't seen my own son for a long time. Look, love, we both know what it's like to be shut up. You know, I used to dread when I was left alone with Dennis and Linda, wondering when some nosy parker would come round and tell me that we're in need of care and protection. What I would have done, I shudder to think. You'd have fought tooth and nail. I and probably made it worse for all of us. Well, where are you going? I'm going to get the other half in. I'll be back. Now, look here, Emily Nugent. You've spent the last 15 minutes chattering non-stop about nothing, which is a record for you. Well, we don't get many chances to talk about old times, do we? Well, at the we? moment, I'm more interested in what's to come than what's gone. You mean your hopes for the future? Mm, for once in your life, you've clouted a nail on without getting a sore thumb. So listen, you go back and tell your hope for the future that if he wants to say anything to me, to come and say it to me himself. I want the organ grinder, not his blooming monkey. Oh, speak of the devil. Mrs. Sharples. All right, come on, trot out the excuses. Pardon? What pardon? I can tell from this palaver that it's not good news. Well, as you seem to have guessed, Mrs. Sharples, a decision All has right, been reached. All right, don't go from one side to the other now, just to get to market. Just to have the gumption to admit that you codged it. We did our best, Mrs. Sharples. Ah, we both voted for you, but they voted for somebody else. Then it was up to the chairman, you see. Casting vote, you see. Unfortunately, you didn't cast it in your direction. Bad luck, Mrs. Sharples. Ah, well, that's how it goes. Can I buy you a drink? I don't drink with folks as make promises and then only do half a job. And if you pour it out like your politics, you'd spill it all over the floor. Some people say pussies don't appreciate good homes, but I'm sure Bobby does. Mind mm. you, he can't keep away from the canal bank. It's the lure of the wild. Only I do get worried when he comes back all wet and bedraggled. Oh, hello, Mrs. Tatlow. Good afternoon, Mrs. Caldwell. Uh, I was just saying to her. Another time, Mrs. Caldwell, love. Yes, but I haven't got what I come for. Yes, well, I'm closing for dinner, you see. Well, you never do. I am today, love. Oh, but I want to. I'm very get sorry. Something. There was no need for that. This won't be a long conversation. Oh, you've guessed why I rung then. Well, that's say I didn't have to sit and ponder very deeply. I thought you'd work it out. No, oh, one aspect of it does remain a bit of a mystery. Right, let's have it cleared up then. But what right do you think you've got to interfere? I know you're Ken's sister-in-law, but I can't see that that gives you any position of importance. I'm not looking for a position of importance. What I am, nobody can take away. I'm their auntie. I was married to Ken's brother. And you honestly think that gives you some sort of Listen, right? Listen, I was left with nothing. But I've only had my little boy. Don't you understand? You believe in Ken with nothing but photographs to look at. Yes, well, getting emotional doesn't help. Well, it's about time somebody got emotional. I'm not like Ken, you know. If it was my kid you was trying to take off me, I'd spit in your eye. Well, they're not yours, Oh, never they? mind that. Look, I don't doubt that your motives are very sincere. They're as sincere as yours are mistaken. You know, some sayings are true. You do have to be cruel to be kind. I don't think you're being cruel. I think you're being misguided, and what you're doing is destructive. Well, I'll be the best judge of that where Val's children are concerned. Just listen, when I was little and my mum used to say to me when I was being naughty, if you don't behave our Irma, I'll put you in a gnome. Do you know I'll be as good as gold after that? Do you mind opening the door? Please don't take Ken's kids off him. Stop all this around before it's too late.
It's not all beer and skittles being a counsellor, you know. Oh, no, we've got our crackpots and complaints and crosses to bear. Well, there must be some reward at the end of it all. Ah, chairmanship of the sewage committee. Still, I don't suppose it's all wine and roses in your job, either. I mean, do you never get an evening off? Are you still stopping in here, Alf Roberts? I thought you had a job to go back to. I've half an hour before I'm due back. My God, I think you've forgotten what you look like. Now, look, Mrs Sharples, I came in here to do you a service. Right, well, I'll have that milk stout you offered me, then. Two-timer. One milk stout in the snow. Well? Three wells make a river, you in the middle make it bigger. Sit down. I haven't got all day. And I haven't got that caretaker's job. Now, I've said all I can about that. Oh, no, you haven't. You haven't told me who I've got it. That's still to be officially confirmed. Oh, never mind the red tape. Look, even her as has got it won't know till the day after tomorrow. Oh, there, did you say that? Narrows it down. There were only two other hers in besides me. There was Etty Thorpe and that Mrs Thingamajig. Which where is it? I'm not at liberty to say. Not at liberty? You take plenty any road coming in here ogling the barmaids. Here now, steady on. Well, somebody will have to start talking soon. When's who's it going to be? I don't suppose it'll do any harm, but you're not to tell nobody else, mind. I'm not a blob chops. Look. I won't even ask you to say it. Just write it down. Well, there's only one thing more to do now. Now, look, Mrs Sharples. God bless, good health and good luck. <sighs> Didn't think I was going to ask you something, did you? Where did I leave? Well, let's hope there's some progress made this afternoon. You're the time to go, then? I'm catching a bus at the bottom of this street at 20 minutes to two. That gives us a good 15 minutes. I shall wait at the stop. 15 minutes to talk this thing over quietly and calmly. There's nothing more to be said. Look, 15 minutes to talk this over, because once you get on that bus, it's out of our hands. Ken, something's got to be done. Oh, it'll be done all right. It'll be done in the courts. It'll be done by lawyers and solicitors. It'll be done for the good of Susan and Peter. Yes, except they won't be Susan and Peter. They'll be wards of court like somebody out of Dickens. And it won't be Val's mother and Val's husband. It'll be Barlow versus Tatlock. Look, I know this is a drastic step. And don't take it. Ken, we need help. Well, not this desperately at this stage, surely. Those children need to be settled. Look, I admit that I've been lost. I've been grasping at straws and taking temporary expedients. Yes, and the ideal solution is still as far off. Well, the ideal solution isn't ours for the having anymore, is it? What would Val want? That's what haunts me. Well, we won't find that out in the children's department. Ken, I'm at my wit's end. So am I. At least we've got that in common. Well, look, that's a start. Just admitting that is better than going to sort of legal tangling over possession. Possessions? They're not bricks and mortar. Well, that's the sort of terms I'll be using in court. Look, Ken, all I want to do is my best for the children. Then cancel that appointment. Look, I've got leave from college. Why don't we go out to Glasgow together with the twins and we talk this whole thing over and get in on some sort of basis? What do you say? Please. All right. Don't you know that to ignore folks is the height of bad manners? Oh, uh, uh, pardon me. Now, was she saying something? And the least you could do, I think, is to order a drink in before Annie Walker starts coming, the madam. If Mrs Caldwell wishes to just sit, that is perfectly all right by me. There is no obligation to order. 
Oh, she wouldn't have a brass face. She's not the only one. I might just as well sit and talk to this table. Oh, I'm sorry, Inna. I'm feeling upset. You must be when I mention old friends and you just stare at the wall. Well, I've got a bad memory for names, mind you. I never forget her face. Well, Hetty Thorpe seems to remember you very well. Oh, is uh, she the one on the long list? The short list. The short list for the caretaker's job. Oh. Have you got that stuck in your noddle? Oh, well, I think she was really more Martha's friend. I haven't seen her for ages. Oh, that's your trouble, Minnie Cole. Well, you just don't keep in touch. I go to the funerals. <laughs> By heck, it's being so cheerful as keeps you going. Well, I know I wander a bit, only she'd got no right to shove me out of the shop before I'd even got what I went in for. All right, you follow me. If Emma Barlow's going to start throwing her weight, I bet she must do it with somebody more her own size. Good morning. Good morning. My goodness, it's a relief to see the back of another lunchtime session. You wishing your life away again, Mrs. Walker? Still, everybody has been a bit down in the dumps. <laughs> no wonder with that situation at the Barlows, it casts a slur on the whole street. I just wish that that woman would pay us a visit. I'd give her a piece of my mind. <laughs> well, don't drop your glass, but your wishes just come true. Mrs. Tetlock, how nice to see you. I presume you've come to give us a lecture on the evils of drink. No, Mrs. Walker, I've come to see Miss Lynch. To apologise, I trust? I would like to speak to her privately, if that's possible. I think you'd better stay, Mrs. Walker. Well, I said some very unkind and undeserved things the other day. I'm sorry. Oh, think now of it. Get very thick skin leading my way of life. From what I hear, Mrs. Tatlock, the remarks that you made to Miss Lynch were little short of slanderous. Yes, I know. And her feelings were deeply hurt by Mrs. your attitude. Mrs. Walker, I am genuinely trying to apologise if you will let me. It isn't easy when you've acted as I have. And... All set? I hope so. I'll go and start the packing. Packing? Yes, we're going to Glasgow for a few days, taking the twins with us. We've, uh, well, sorted things out for the Oh, day. thank the Lord for that. Oh, I am pleased. Yes, so am I. She really is sorry, you know, Beth. Anyway, thanks very much for all your help. If ever you want a reference, you know where to come. Oh, well, there's a change from typecasting, as Diana Dawes used to say. <laughs> right, well, I'll see you when I get back then. I better go and write a little note for the milkman. Look after yourself, Ken. Oh, well, thanks so much. Bye bye. Bye, Ken. Well, that's that. I might as well take all my childcare books back to the library. You know, I hope we weren't too hard on Mrs. Tatlock. That apology, come to think of it, must have cost her a good deal. It was odd. And she didn't pay up a minute too soon. Hello there. I just popped in to uh, report a further development. Oh, they look tasty. Ooh, by all means. Oh, tell very much. You said nice bit of ham, that. Yeah. Something about a further development. A lesson only in the noble art of flannel. Or, as they say in the highest circles... Diplomacy. Hey, play to the whistle. No, what happened was, after you left, I got nobbled by a chap who was trying to get higher on the housing list. Mm, I didn't realise that Miss Lynch was seeking council accommodation. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you don't joke. Henry Road. To put a long story to ribbons, Ina Sharples came in, so I bought her a drink, just to soothe ruffle feathers, so to speak. She wished me good health and God bless. I've got a better word than diplomacy. Statesmanship. Oh, I've got me a mustard, you two. You ought to put a bit more on these butties. Ta-da! Oh, Mrs Sharples did seem extremely ruffled. Not to say rattled. Still, she did wish him good health. Which, in the circumstances, might well have a certain sinister significance. Mm. <coughs> My two little flowers, I'm not going to sell you this sun kissed afternoon. Well, we're not on your soft soap for a start. Oh? It's coming to something when a shop of this sort can afford to turn trade away. Oh, look, Mrs. Caldwell, if it's what happened at dinner time, I'm awfully sorry. Well, you served Mrs. Tatlock, and I was in front of her. You're making me feel awful now, but you see, that was it. I had something very private to say to Mrs. Tatlock. Yes, I thought you looked a bit worried. Anyway, it's all over now, and we're all happy again, aren't we? And I'm all contrite and begging your pardon. Well, it's just that I came in special for something. Well, if I can oblige. Oh, now, what was it? Oh, dear. I, I can't remember. I know what you want. 
Got one tin of salmon. Tin of salmon. A pot of black currant jam. What have you got in the way of fancies? Oh, no, Ian, I don't think it could have been that. I couldn't afford all that. Yes, you can, cos I'm going halves. Besides, Hetty Thorpe will expect some sort of spread. Hetty, you? Hetty Thorpe, your old pal, you're inviting her to tea this afternoon. Am I? Yes, of course you are. Now, have you got it right? One tin of salmon, a pot of blackcurrant jam, and what have you got?